Okay, so we just wind up with uh, our class. So we're looking at megaloblastic or pernicious anemia. I've already explained. So this is about our findings of which I've already explained to you guys. So we finish up. So the treatment of megaloblastic or pernicious anemia. So really there, when you're looking at treatment, you have weekly intramuscular injection of 1,000 micrograms of vitamin B12. So you have, you need to introduce this vitamin B12 intramuscular, because it could be that you have a challenge with the intrinsic factor, so you're not producing the intrinsic factor. So even if you have oral intake of vitamin B12, you won't be able to internalize this vitamin B12. So the only effective way of introducing the vitamin B12 is by intramuscular injection, not intravenous injection, but intramuscular injection for the initial four to six weeks, then followed by oh, 1,000 micrograms per week indefinitely. Then you can also have delayed treatment. If you have delayed treatment, permits progression of anemia and neurological complications. So if you delay with the treatment, you can have a progression of this anemia, and then you also have neurological complications like I've already explained. The last one that we're going to discuss is a plastic anemia. So from the word a plastic, it means that you have a bone marrow that is not producing red blood cells, or they're not producing enough red blood cells that can be due to um, a mutation or it can be due to a cancer. So let's start. So the a plastic anemia is a rare blood dyscrasia. So it's a layer, it's a rare blood dyscrasia in which peripheral blood pancytopenia results from reduced or absent blood cell production in the bone marrow and normal hematopoietic tissue in the bone marrow has been replaced by fatty marrow. So you have replacement of normal hematopoietic tissue with fat marrow. So instead of having red marrow, you'll be having more of yellow marrow because of the fat infiltration which is taking place. Because red marrow is not functional in this case. So Paul Eric introduced the concept of a plastic anemia in 1988, but later on in 1904, it was termed as a plastic anemia by Chalford. So this Chalford is a scientist that introduced this weight now, a plastic anemia, but the theory was introduced by Paul Eric in 1888. So you have environmental exposures such as drugs, viruses, toxins, and these are thought to trigger the aberrant immune response in some patients. But the most cases are classified as idiopathic, so the cause is not really known why the bone marrow is not producing sufficient amount of red blood cells. So it's a plastic anemia with a known cause. So you can have drugs, that can trigger that or viruses or toxins that can also trigger the plastic anemia. There are two chief forms of a plastic anemia. You have primary a plastic anemia with unknown etiology. So here you don't know the etiology. So it's called a primary plastic anemia. So you have young adults that will develop rapidly and terminate fatally. So we find that the young adults will be dying of this plastic anemia. Then you have secondary plastic anemia with non-etiology. So the secondary one, you have a non-etiology. Exposure of the patient to various drugs or chemical substances to radiant energy in the form of X-rays, radium or radioactive isotopes, all these can predispose an adult or any person to secondary plastic anemia. So here, you know the cause. It's due to exposure to these chemicals or drugs or radiations, poisoning. The clinical manifestations, you have pancytopenia. So you have reduced number of white blood cells and also 
thrombocytopenia. So you have leukopenia and thrombocytopenia associated with also reduction in red blood cell count. So you have anemia such as fatigue, my legs, chest pain, shortness of breath, then more sudden onset of bleeding caused by thrombocytopenia, and then this will manifest as increased bruising, evident by papular, papular and petechi hemorrhage, so you have petechiations or petechi hemorrhage, epistasis, gingiva, breeding, leukopenia, neutropenia, all these will have as a, result, as a result of a plastic anemia. So it's not just the red blood cells that are affected. So even the white blood cells, platelet production is also affected because this is a problem with the bone marrow, the red bone marrow. So if the red bone marrow is affected, it means it can't produce enough red blood cell, it can't produce enough white blood cell, it can't produce enough platelets. So you have a situation whereby all the red blood cells are reduced in terms of numbers. So it's preceded by infections, by hepatitis, viruses, EBV. EBV stands for Epstein-Barr virus, or the other name for Epstein-Barr virus is also called human gamma herpes virus 4. So human gamma herpes virus 4, or EBD, which is called Epstein-Barr virus, or HIV, parvovirus, then you can also have mycobacterial infections that can result into a plastic anemia. So the oral manifestations, you have hemorrhage, candidiasis, viral infection, gingival breeding. Then the laboratory findings, of course, you have a diminished number of red blood cell, about 1 million red blood cell per cubic meter. So you also have reduced hemoglobin levels. Then you can have a pulsate or a pulsate of granulocytes, monocytes, cytocytes is also found. So you have reduced numbers of these cells. Then you can have prolonged breeding time because you don't have enough uh, platelets or because of thrombocytopenia. So if you have thrombocytopenia, you have reduced platelets and then you have prolonged breeding time. Then the tourniquet test is also positive for this condition. Treatments, you have blood transfusion to correct the anemia and thrombocytopenia. Then you can also use immunosuppression with antithymocyte globulins. So these antithymocyte globulins and cyclosporins is effective at restoring blood cell production. So you have these drugs that you can use, cyclosporin drugs. Oral health consideration, you also need to take care of that. Okay, so that's enough for this part two of lecture five. This is where we're going to end. So if you have questions, we'll still interact later on.